Welcome this afternoon to another Bird News News and Views. Um, we have Dr. Mark Gishard from the uh, Premier Weather Service, the director actually, so not just from there, he's the director. Um, <laughs> Mark, what's the biggest difference between uh, today at 5 p.m. and yesterday at 5 p.m.? So the the there's very little change in terms of the forecast. Uh, I'll talk about what some of those changes are though. Um, the small change that is a positive one is that we're expected to have a slightly shorter duration of hurricane force winds overnight. The timing is very similar though. The um, closest point of approach still forecast to be about 6 a.m. tomorrow morning. Um, hurricane force winds are expected to arrive um, at the island by around 3 a.m. local time tonight and last uh, six to seven hours. So that's very similar to the last uh, forecast uh, earlier today. Um, uh, last night, yesterday, we were talking about sort of nine nine hours worth of hurricane force winds. Uh, a hurricane hunter aircraft has gone in and investigated uh, this system and found that the, her, the sort of radius of hurricane force winds is um, quite a bit smaller than previously predicted yesterday. That said, if I can share my screen once again. Sure. I thought that was kind of cool yesterday, being able to see that from your screen. Good. Uh, I'm glad that worked. Um, and can you see that OK? I do now. Yeah, there it is. OK. So as you can see on our satellite and radar products here, here's Bermuda at the, in the center of this uh, animation with the red ring representing the uh, marine area around Bermuda, 25 nautical miles. And what we see in the uh, bottom right-hand corner Approaching us uh, gradually is Hurricane Paulette. It's a category one storm still. It's um, uh, predicted to increase in intensity to about 75 knots by 6 p.m. tonight. And um, you can see that circular eye pattern um, that is uh, fairly well established now. So it's much more organized tonight um, as was predicted yesterday and is much more of a, um, um, a, a hurricane uh, sort of a classically uh, symmetric uh, hurricane. And you can see the outer bands approaching the island from the southeast. Uh, we've already started to see some rain uh, pop through the island um, earlier this afternoon. Hopefully that didn't do too much to dampen uh, the, um, uh, the preparations that were going on, but uh, we're certainly in for more of it. And uh, just looking around some of the observations around the island, we're starting to creep into that um, into that mode of having tropical storm force winds, which are 34 knots or greater. Um, certainly, we're getting gusts in that range and definitely at uh, uh, exposed and elevated locations such as the uh, the National Museum of Bermuda up in, up in Dockyard where uh, we have uh, an instrument on the, um, or we're reporting data from an instrument on the top of it. Uh, so yeah, we're, we're just starting to get into it now. Uh, we do have a bit of a long haul overnight um, and the forecast track does bring uh, the center of Paulette right over Bermuda as a category two storm. And uh, so we can expect wind speeds somewhere between uh, 80 and 90 knots um, around uh, just before and just after 6 a.m. tomorrow morning. Now, how unusual in the history of uh, hurricanes is it for one, because this one's sort of like curving around us uh, quite often. They seem like they go over us and they're continuing going straight. Mm -hmm. and, and how does that make a difference uh, to how it affects Bermuda? So when storms uh, approach Bermuda from the south, they're often taking this sort of recurving path. And uh, they're going from uh, being embedded within the sort of more easterly trade winds, the, the sort of background flow, to going into being embedded more in the westerly winds uh, into the mid latitudes. One of the things about being embedded here in the subtropics as Bermuda is at our latitude is we get the, uh, the best and the worst of both types of weather, tropical weather um, and mid latitude weather. Cool. So um, is that part of the reason why we're gonna see the winds for a longer period of time? Partly yes, because it's making that turn and uh, it's making that turn right over the island. Uh, think about a, a car having to go around a bend. Um, it has to slow down to go around that bend, and that's the same with storms. And so it means that it it slows down the duration of its uh, 
its peak winds is a, is a lot longer than it would be if we were just in a straight line track. So just uh, not necessarily about the hurricane, but like for you and your staff, what, what normally when we're getting ready to, to and it's almost on, on top of us, what are you doing? Is there like a full complement of staff there? Is it just you? Yeah. So usually there would be a doubling up of the shift where we'd have uh, two shift forecasters, two shift observers on hand, um, and uh, they would swap off um, in the uh, from day shift to night shift, but still be around in the building to uh, to help out. Of course, with these uh, in these times where we have a pandemic and we've got to put in uh, physical distancing restrictions, uh, we're a little bit short staffed this time. And uh, luckily, my uh, diligent staff are still planning to to be here um, with myself and our deputy director as well. So um, please forgive any uh, sort of uh, shortness of the interviews, uh, Don, because uh, we have a few other interviews to do and uh, quite a lot of work to do in the interim. Uh, just uh, one last question before you go. Um, the viewers want to know about storm surge. Mm, yes. So um, we put in a, a sort of a, a rough guide for storm surge. I think this is something that people are very, or generally, usually very interested in. Uh, in recent years, we've had uh, with storms of category two and three intensity approaching Bermuda from the south, just like Paulette is doing. Uh, we have experienced storm surge of about three feet thereabouts. So that's a good rule of thumb to, to follow uh, that for a storm of this size and intensity, we might expect to have uh, three foot seas, um, sorry, three foot storm surge, I should say, which is the water level itself at the peak of the storm. So just very close to the, the maximum sustained winds. Um, so really that ramps up over the period of an hour or two um, during the during the time when um, the, the center of the storm is making its closest approach. And so that that really is a, 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 a rough guide. We don't have any, uh, we don't have a storm surge model as such. There's some um, um, some equipment we would need to install as well to, to properly monitor a storm surge. Uh, we're, we're working towards that, but uh, at present we can, the best we can do is some, some estimates based on previous storms. Um, mm -hmm. And they're, they're safe. They're pretty safe estimates. We have, uh, uh, we don't have the, the sort of gently sloping continental shelf like you would on the, the East coast of the United States or in the Caribbean. And so our seafloor topography actually helps to, uh, um, prevent any um, increase in storm surge. Doesn't mean we don't get it, but it just means that it's not exacerbated by the um, by the um, the coastline. Uh, so we're in a pretty good position when it comes to storm surge. So everyone can just expect we're in a normal category one, two hurricane, the same sort of thing. Yes, there there is one point I, I need to put a caution in about. Um, in the last couple of storms were where I quoted that three foot range that was sort of above the existing tide and in the last couple of storms we've had that maximum in storm surge came at low tide okay tomorrow morning high tide is fairly coincident with the timing of the closest point of approach so we if all if the forecast holds true then we should expect to see a much higher storm surge just by virtue of having having it happen at high tide um, so uh, it's it's worth keeping out an eye for those impacts. Okay. Again, as always, really appreciate your time. I know you're a busy man, you got other things to do. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Kishard. No problem. We'll, uh, we'll speak to you again sometime. Right. And for Don Burgess, everyone be safe and have a Bermuda evening.